So today we're going to talk about FTC Part 2, which is also known as the Fundamental Theory of Calculus. So it starts off with, if f, a function, is continuous on an open interval i containing a, a number, then for every x in the interval, the derivative of the antiderivative of f of t dt equals f of x. Now, let's just take a moment to look at this entire thing. It makes sense that when you take the derivative of an antiderivative, an antiderivative being something that you take the opposite of a derivative, it makes sense that when you take a derivative of an antiderivative, you would get back basically the original, but with x substituted in. So, to prove this, we can use FTC part 1. So, we're going to take the derivative of f of t. So the derivative of f of t, we're going to call capital F of t. Now, it's the interval is going from a to x, so we make our little bounds, f of, f of t from a to x. So then we have, using FTC part 1, f of x minus f of a. Now notice, this is going to be f of x, but this f of a is going to be a number. We know this because whatever this function is, if you plug in a, which is going to be a number, you're always going to get a number back, because you can plug it in. Okay, so now it asks to find the derivative of this. So, d of, over dx of f of x minus f of a. So now we're basically going to be undoing the antiderivative we just did here. So the derivative of capital f of x is going to be f of x times x prime, because you have to do chain rule. You have to multiply it by, what, by whatever the derivative of the inside is. But now we have f of a. f of a is going to be a number. Now if you take the derivative of a number, you're going to get zero. So it's going to be f of x times x prime plus zero. So this zero we don't even need. So that's why a isn't really incorporated into this final um, thing that we get from FTC part two. Um, now notice here we say times x prime. Here, if you were to substitute t or x for t, and you multiply it by x prime, it would be times one. So that's basically the same thing. So just a reminder here. Okay, so suppose we have these two example problems. These two are uh, relatively easy, but we'll, we'll move on to harder problems later. So here we have the derivative of the antiderivative from 1 to x of cosine t dt. Now, FTC part 2 tells you that anytime you see a t, you should replace it with this number here, and then multiply it by um, x prime. So we're going to get cosine of x. Now, the derivative of x is 1, so you could write it if you want, but it's really just going to be cosine of t. That's how easy that is. Now, how about this one? Here we have the derivative from the derivative of the antiderivative from 2 to x of 1 minus t cubed times dt. Here, we're going to find that same idea, just plug in x for t. So we get 1 minus x cubed. So here you might want, you might be tempted to multiply it by 3x squared, but this is a reminder that you're not multiplying it by the derivative of this, this, this um, x here, but always this one here above the interval. Never take the derivative of this here x. So that would just be the, that would just be the answer here. Okay, so now let's do these problems. These problems are a little bit harder because you can see that there's no longer just x here. You're going to have to take the derivative of these x's. So, derivative of the antiderivative from 0 to x squared of t squared plus 5 times dt. So what we're going to do here is we're going to substitute, we're going to put x squared for t. So that becomes x squared squared plus 5, and then times the derivative of x squared, so that would be times 2x. Now we can simplify x squared squared as x to the fourth plus 5, and this would be 
because it's using that idea that anytime you square you square square, you multiply these two numbers together times 2x. And that is going to be your answer here. And this one. See, this one is, a, is the hardest of them all so far because this one has an x here too. It's not just 0. So you're going to have to deal with this too. So the first step that I like to do is always just plug in this number for t and then worry about this later. So it's going to be 5 minus 3x cubed. Now you should multiply by the derivative of this number here. So that would be times 9x squared. Now, FTC part 1 states that f of x minus f of a is what the antiderivative is of like, I don't know, a to x of f of t. Now, if you have an, a, uh, an x here, you're going to want to subtract it. You can't just leave it alone like this and not do anything for this here. So it'd be minus 5 minus x squared and multiply it by the derivative of this number. So this is what your entire answer would be.